Welcome back everyone. In this video, I wanna make my house more not freakishly hot, more efficient. And one of the things that I did in one of my previous videos is I put the insulation in the garage. And that was another thing. So I, I put it in the garage. The garage is much better um, now that I put that insulation up there. But as I was up there, the roof was hot. Summertime, it's just the, the tar, the shingles, the everything, it gets crazy hot up there. So what I've ordered and what I'm gonna put up is a radiant barrier. Now that radiant barrier is something that you put up. It's like tin foil, but you have radiant waves that come in from the sun, just that heat that radiates in and it stops it basically. It's like a barrier for that heat to seep through to get into your attic. And once it's in your attic, then your attic, you know, is super hot. It slowly seeps into your house, garage, whatever it is. So I'm going to get that. I'm going to put it up and uh, let's, let's, let's go up there. Let's see how crazy hot it is. All right, guys, this is future me. And something that I figured out is I lost the footage, which really sucks because a before and after you need the before to show. This was a really lengthy process um, because it's hot as hell up there. It, I'll show you, I'll actually go up there. There's some blank spots that I can get a good reading on to show you what the whole thing was like before. But it was, uh, it was a lengthy process that took me a few months to do just because it's so hot up there. It was like an early in the morning, on days off, like maybe an hour up there, get a strip, get a roll uh, across the house and just do it once. Um, in hindsight, definitely do this in cooler times or hire someone to do it that I guess does this for a living, but this is more of a DIY video anyway. So do it when it's cooler. I really recommend the brand that I used and, and don't do it when it's like 150 degrees up there, like literally 150 degrees. It sucks. So I was waiting. It took me a year because I started this and finished this last year, but I was waiting for another day that was 91 degrees where I did my initial testing to show you current testing and it's finally gotten up to 91 degrees, but I lost the footage. So I'm gonna go up there now. And like I said, I'm gonna show you what it would look like if the, you know, just imagine the whole place was like that. I'm gonna get some bare uh, wood roofing and I'm gonna take some temperatures off of that. And that's what the whole place was. And I'll just tell you now, it, it was really hot up there. So I'm up here in the attic and I'm gonna get a few of the bare spots. So. Um, this one is not going to count because that is not actually facing the outside, but I am going to get some readings up here. This is just the wood as it is. You need to leave a blank spot. I'm also going to get some readings over here right next to the outside. That one probably be a little cooler since that's right in the airflow. I mean, technically that one is too, but there's less airflow. So I'm going to get some readings on what the roof's temperature actually was before I did this beautiful job that took me forever. It's very satisfying when you're done. So right here on the roof, this one is sitting right around 146, 147, 148. It's trying to normalize 148-ish, maybe a little bit of gusts of wind. But last time I did this, it was around 149, 152 when I did this last time. Oh, there's 155 over there. What about over here? Oh, that's, oh, there it goes, 147. So you can kind of understand the temperatures that you're getting in here. If the entire roof is over 150 degrees in your entire attic, it's gonna get crazy hot in here. So, uh, yeah really freaking hot especially if uh you're doing it in the middle of the day and you're like hey i got some radiant barrier let's do it no don't now this is a real tough one to get to so i'm gonna do the best i can to try to get it this is right next to the airflow so we're looking at 136 so that's right next to the soffits so that's probably the coolest that you're gonna get. And as it comes up, it's gonna be hotter. So inside here, the actual attic whole area, I did a test inside here 
and we are sitting at about 140. It's not as hot as the actual uh, roof itself because there is airflow in here, as it should. So we are talking about 140 something degrees in the attic. Ooh, it's hot up there. So you may be asking yourself, how? How can I get my house cooler? How can I run my air conditioner less? How can I make so my attic's not as hot so it seeps into my house? Radiant barrier. So let's install it. Let's get back into the video. All right, so these came in the mail. I've got my radiant barrier. I decided to go with uh, atticfoil.com. Uh, pretty much they're the best comparatively. As far as I can tell, the materials, like its efficiency, like at what it does, is pretty much the same. However, these guys, um, their foil is super, super strong and it doesn't rip really easily. So I really like that, especially for someone that hasn't done this before and is gonna put it up there. So yeah, here's my stuff. I um, gotta make sure I grab some lights to go up there. I'm gonna have cutting tools to make sure I can cut it while I'm up there. I gotta get my ladder up there. And then of course I gotta get my staple gun. All right, back up in the attic early morning. Actually feels decent up here, not too hot yet. So what we're gonna do is we've got the attic foil taken out. We're gonna do it the easy way. So we're gonna get to the corner of the house and we're gonna staple it along the truss. So you see how each one of these trusses are here. We're gonna staple it along this and then just blanket it. You can do lines through each one, but it's a lot easier if you just get a bigger roll put it long ways and then just all the way across. So we're gonna start at the corner down at the bottom. No, we're gonna start at the top. We'll start at the top, go across. Um, it's gonna be a little bit finicky with all these truss beams in the way, but we don't have to put it anywhere here. It's just gonna be along the roof itself. Okay, just got the packaging off of it. So here's the opening. This stuff is super, it, it's, it doesn't rip, basically. That, that's the whole cell of it to make it easier to install. So this stuff is nice and thick. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna come up top. We don't wanna put it directly in the middle. We wanna put it off to the side. We wanna give it breathing room up here. And then every in between every truss, we're gonna lay it over that just to leave that air pocket. That's how this stuff works to reflect heat. So I'm gonna put the first one all the way at the end over here. It doesn't have to be pretty. That's the biggest thing, which is really nice. Somehow staple it up against here and then push it all the way along and then just staple along each truss and it's just gonna go across just like that. All right, so we are making progress. Here is the center of the house. You can see that I went all the way back there at the very back, came through and this is just all we're doing. We're leaving a nice gap in between here. You have to have that air gap and then evening it up on here, stapling it in. Again, doesn't have to be pretty, just like they say. As long as you have this up, it's gonna do its job. So that's what we're doing. We're making a long strip all the way down. We're about almost halfway. And then to the other end of the house. And we wanna do that just because up here, I gotta be on a ladder on wood. So it's better to get the ladder portion out of the way for this side, and then again on this side. And once we're done with that, then I can do it all standing from the top and then a few more strips down there. Once we're done with that, then we gotta do that flat side of the house and then the other side, then we'll be done.
All right, a little bit of a progress update in here. So this side of the house, I am completely done. The very bottom, I left a gap. It's kind of hard to see this far away, but you leave a gap, maybe two-ish, two to three feet, just so airflow can come in through the bottom. Anything that doesn't, like all the heat from the roof, is up in here. Travel, travel, travel. And then it exhausts up in the vent up at top. And now I've been working on this side of the house. As you can see, I'm slowly making my way. I've got it reeled out across the, the trusses and I'm just stapling. And the part where I'm at right now, you can see it's in between. I just have to cut a slit. So I drape it over, cut a slit, lay it down, staple it. It's just a very long process. But I've got about maybe one more strip. I think I'll do one more strip at the very bottom, which is fine because there's no truss obstructions in the way, except it's really tight in the corner. But once I'm done with that, then I can move on to the end piece of the house on both sides. This one's a little bit different though. So you can see I have this part here, but if you look over here on the side, it ends and then there's another. That's just the way the front of my house is designed. So I have to squeeze back behind this and put the radiant barrier straight flush up against this stuff. So let me finish up with this side of the house, which is our major portion is everything across this part. That's the, the most surface area. Then I've got the end cap over there and the end cap over here and I'll be done. It is so hot. All right, we are all finished. You can see I've got the radiant barrier. I got a nice little gap up at top and that's where we get some airflow. You can't really see over here on the sides, but uh, maybe over here, you can see I've got a nice little gap that's for the airflow to come into the house. We don't wanna seal off the attic, but I've got everything. You can see there's a blank spot there. That's cause just the way the house is built there's a wall on the other side of that. So I've got the radiant barrier on the other side and then I continue it over here where it needs to be continued because there's nothing on that wall except for the outside. So the sun is gonna go through there. Anyway, all the way down to the very end, you can see it's everywhere. I have covered everything. So it's still hot up here. I mean, it doesn't make it cold. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to test. Now that it is, it's not exactly 91, but it's 90. It's been 90, it's supposed to be 91 in, in, a, in a bit, but it is 90 degrees. We've got the whole radiant barrier up. Let's see what the difference really is in the attic. Let's see what the difference is. So I'm gonna grab, put my light down. Let's grab our handy dandy little thermo reader. And we've got 119, 118 on the wood. Let's try over here. 120. Looks like about 120. Now, I'm not sure if it'll work on this. It's, you're not supposed to do these lasers with reflective surfaces. One, these aren't super reflective, maybe a, a dull spot, 125. So take this with a grain of salt because it's not supposed to be on reflective surfaces. So 120, it looks like it's pretty consistent. Let's try this up here. Yeah, see that's about 150 with the bear. And then we just go away from it back into the 120s, maybe here on the wood, 130, 125. So yeah, we're sitting pretty steady in the 120s around here. Now, another thing that I also want to say is here in the garage. So if you watched my previous video, whichever one it was, I did insulation up at the top of up here. You can see I put in the pink roll insulation to help the garage not get so crazy hot. And now I just did the radiant barrier. So it's, again, it's still warm in here. I mean, heat still eventually seeps into the garage, but it's so much less. So like... We'll take a look at just the wall in here, like 97, 97. Yeah, it's sitting 95. Floor's probably cooler because it's concrete. But yeah, this is, uh, it's much more manageable in here in the 90s 
where it's just a few degrees difference outside, whereas it used to be like the attic in here. It used to be like 120 degrees. Like it just, all the heat seeped in through here. Yeah, 98 degrees when we have 120 up there. So nice difference in the garage. That radiant barrier is definitely helping. So looking at the before and looking at the after, there's a big difference. Putting that radiant barrier up there changes the attic's temperature, at least comparing a 90 degree day, 91, 90 degree day, full sun, no overcast, no rain, no nothing. We're looking at at least a 20 degree difference in the attic. Now it's still hot. It doesn't make it cold, but it makes it so much more bearable up there. And that means cooler, cooler hotness. That's kind of a weird thing to say, but less hot heat seeping into your house, which means your AC is going to run less. You're going to recuperate that cost really, really quick. So I hope you enjoyed. Sorry about the lost footage. I wish I had it, but it was deleted probably months and months ago. Sorry about that, but I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have the chance to get some Radiant Barrier, absolutely do it. Or if you hire someone to do it, it's a really, really good investment. You'll save money in the long run. So that's what I like. So I'll see you all in the next video.